So we're going to get started. I'm pretty sure everybody can see me. Um, good afternoon, everyone. And I guess it's still morning in the West for any of you that are joining from the West. Um, my name is Wendy Zapato, for those of you that don't know me. And on behalf of PW Network and my business partner, Tina Haslip, that's also joining us today. And of course, our host from Continue Care. We're very pleased to welcome you to our webinar this morning or this afternoon. How to shift to digitally streamline workflows to improve care and senior living. And I know all of us can relate to this very important topic. It resonates with all of us working in senior living today that we're all struggling with staffing, whether it's finding people, keeping people, uh, managing people, um, keeping them motivated. So hopefully we're bringing you some great information today. We're very excited. We've got a jam-packed agenda for you and some great speakers. Um, just to be short and sweet, our agenda is going to cover off a very quick keynote. Then we're going to move into a very short update from Arrow from Continue Care. And then we're very excited to hear from our peers and what they're saying in the industry. So we'll have three panelists um, from the senior living sector that will be joining us for some interactive dialogue. I did want to mention to everybody that the chat line is available. And we're really hoping to have a few minutes at the end of the webinar to take some of the questions. So if you have some specific questions that you want to direct to some of the panelists or to anyone else on the call, please send that through on the chat. And in the event we don't get to that, we will certainly be sending out um, written answers to all of your questions. So hopefully you'll have a chance to uh, think through some things that we're presenting. And uh, I think we're ready, ready to go. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn it over to Valerie G. If I can pronounce his name right, and I apologize. Go ahead. Um, the CEO for MedStack is going to be our first presenter. Thank you very much, uh, everyone. Thank you for joining today. Um, my name is Bala Jigopalan. I'm very honored to be here. Um, I, I guess the first thing I'd like to say is I, I want to thank and honor uh, everybody who works in this important space. Um, there's certainly been a lot of attention across the industry, both people who work in it and, and, and those of us even outside of it, on uh, how we deliver better, more quality care and living experiences to our valued seniors. The work you guys do is really, really important. And it is facing a lot of transformation, uh, a lot of new questions that have arisen, um, especially in light of, of COVID-19 over the past little while. Um, so I'm happy to introduce myself. My name is Balaji Gopalan. I'm in Toronto, Canada. Uh, I run a company called MedStack. Uh, MedStack is a software application that exists to help more people create technologies in all areas of health and wellness. Um, and, uh, and that's what we do. Uh, and so uh, the, the team at, at Continue Care had asked me to present a few thoughts on my perspective on what's happening with the digitization of health and, and living workflows um, and some of the things that we're seeing around it. So I thought I'd talk about that for a couple of minutes. <clears throat> um, so the, the big kind of driving force in the move of technology into the health realm and, and health is a very, very big topic. It, it covers everything from you know, personal wellness to things that happen in hospitals, things that happen in insurance companies and pharmacies, as well as things um, that have to do with, with daily living, which is the space that you all work in. This cost has been going up and it's been going up primarily because of two main forces. The first being uh, a rising average age of population, which, you know, of course, everybody here is very familiar with, as well as shift in complexities of care, which is, I'm sure, something you see in, in, the, in the homes that you that you operate uh, around things like chronic conditions, whether that's heart condition, diabetes, mental illness, uh, and, and a whole variety of other things. Um, and as you can see, if you measure the cost of healthcare as a percentage of how much money a country like the United States spends, that percentage has been going up and it predicts the, it's predicted to even go up. Um, the 2021 number isn't on here, <clears throat> but I can tell you that that's definitely much higher than, uh, than 20%. So this is raises a question about how we can deliver these things more efficiently. The way we kind of think about it is what is the opportunity then for software and digital products, uh, computer products operating in this realm? And, and the way I kind of think about it is there are three forces that drive this increased cost in care. The first is that the relationship we have with patients becomes longer. It's no longer transactional, but something you might go see, see a doctor in a hospital 
uh, and then leave. And especially when it comes to, to caring for seniors, this is really, really important. So much of what I know you care about is around the quality of life and quality of life is a long-term conversation. Um, the second is that the things we talk about become really complex. There's lots of symptoms, there's lots of interoperating uh, conditions. We talk about social determinants of care. We not only are concerned with um, what may be the physical condition of our patients, but also the lifestyle conditions of our patients as well. So all these things are interrelated as we well know. And finally, there's a lot of people involved in care and, and care is something you give to a patient and it isn't just necessarily a medical thing, but anything we do to improve their wellness. So all of these things become complicated. There's a lot of data involved. There's a lot of relationships that have to be continuous, experiences that have to be continuous. And this is what uh, digital health data enables us to do. So if we think about what can we do when we unlock the capability for software products to govern the way that we deliver care or to make our care operations work better, there's a lot of really interesting things that happen. So some things that I get to see in my work uh, are everything around you know, workflows within hospitals, evaluating patients, accessing their medical data becoming easier. We think about things like experiences that are now digital, like telemedicine, for example, um, becoming more prevalent as well, so that care can be accessed no matter what the physical circumstances might be. Uh, we think about patients even starting to take control over their, uh, over their own care, like remote patient monitoring or monitoring inside care homes like, like uh, you all operate. <clears throat> and we even think about the creation of new medical technologies, pharmaceutical technologies, taking on a different flavor through things like secure data sharing and monitoring of patients when they're in clinical trials. And of course, all of this has application in so many different segments, but I'm really fascinated by what it means about providing better experiences to our valued seniors. Um, and, uh, and this is a transformation that we can actually physically see happening every single day with more and more interesting things being invented and brought to market. Um, and people are paying attention. So just to give you a sense on how big this actually is, one way we think about it is companies that are being created to create new digital technologies, who's paying attention to them? So this is a view of the amount of money that's being spent by investors on digital health. And you can see the global investment in 2021 was $29 billion. It's a huge jump from where it was before. They literally can't even put a target on this anymore because it is there's a massive gold rush <clears throat> towards the value of, of making healthcare and care work better. And one of the reasons for that is that we can all relate to it. All of us have had experiences where we want ourselves and our family members as patients, caregivers, family members, and even people working in healthcare um, to be better. So it's a very, very exciting time to be creating these things and to be adopting them as well. And so I run a company that gets to see this stuff every day. And we work with lots and lots of different organizations who are building technologies in healthcare. Uh, my specific focus is on data privacy and security so that people can trust that they can safely use these things and adopt them and support them as you do. And we're very happy, of course, to support our friends at, uh, at Continue Care in the, uh, in the the missions that they're building uh, as well. So I'd like to now, uh, with that as a segue, turn it over to my friend Ara to talk a little bit about Continue Care and, and the important work that they're doing. Thank you, Balaji. I'm gonna just be sharing my screen and maybe, um, perfect, okay, I can see it now. So again, thanks again, Balaji. Uh, my name is Ara. I help lead the business operations at uh, Continue Care. In terms of what we do, I think it's relating back to the overall theme of this webinar, which is um, the sentiment we're seeing with both current and um, you know, new clients is that technology is moving in this space from being uh, a nice to have to a must have. Um, and I think the fear around technology that was there before around technology taking away from one of the most important parts of a, a resident experience in a home, that human experience, interacting with staff, um, I think is no longer there and that we've kind of been conscious of that for a while, which is that technology, if used incorrectly, can be bad, but used correctly, it can augment the already great human experience um, in homes. Uh, in terms of what we do, we are a one-stop shop for uh, senior homes across Canada from a technology perspective. Uh, going back to the panel or the uh, seminar or the webinar discussion around streamlining workflows, we essentially help digitize workflows that used to be pen and paper or maybe a bit outdated and just made them easy uh, for staff 
as well as kind of just ensure that management can value out of this new streamlined process. So in terms of the products that we offer, what we're really known for is in the dining room, just because dining is really so important uh, because residents are eating, you know, two, three times a day. So point of sale and that table side meal ordering um, along with digital signage is what we're known for, but we've slowly expanded our sphere of influence um, around that as well. So, you know, we start doing things like a family portal, which we'll be launching in about a few months. We also have, a, you know, um, maintenance requests as well as a recreation portal as well. In terms of how we've stood out or kind of just grown over the years, it's really been around providing really good customer service just because, you know, if management at homes or at a group of homes are investing in using a solution, they want to make sure that, uh, you know, they're getting value out of it and staff are using it, they get the data uh, that they're expecting. Uh, and we're, we're designed specifically for the senior home market. So we're not coming over from the, you know, retire uh, from like the hospitality or restaurant space, like we're only in the senior home market. As such, you know, we are integrated with uh, some of the key software that is used in the space. So whether it's point-click care, uh, or if you're on the retirement side, it's mostly Yardi and Medicare. Um, and we're also really good at turning client feedback into real product features. So you'll hear from the panelists later, but there's, a, there's an example of a feature we call the real-time resident census feature, which went from client feedback to a real product feature that was live that was being used by clients in about two, three weeks. And I'm not promising that's you know something that's standard, but it, it is something we try to do uh, because we are the technology partners, but you at the end of the day are on the ground and you know you have more real insight into what's needed. And you know, like I said, we're over 70 homes across Canada. That's fast growing. Uh, you'll hear from some of our current client partners today, but here are just some of our logos of some other partners that you know you're not hearing from today. Uh, like I said, back to the dining. Uh, process. We focus on it so much, uh, even just because it's such a fundamental or important part of the resident experience. So I don't have to explain this to you, but staffing challenges obviously uh, play, play a big part in it, which is, you know, you might have a dining room where you used to have five dining staff members, and now you might have three or four, or you, you might have enough staff, but there are a lot of them are new. They might be casual staff or just people filling in. So how do you quickly get these folks uh, either quickly acclimated to who these residents are so that you deliver that personalized experience or number two with the staffing issue how do you get less staff to do the same amount of work that you had before uh, we also you know if you have if you're using paper and pen before and you're going to using a system like continue care right away you're going to get a huge efficiency boost uh, untrack revenue is another one i want to talk about very quickly just because for homes they might miss out on this because if you think about what that is, it's like a guest meal missed here or there, or like a, an item like wine or something from a special menu that might be missed. So it might be like 30, 40, $50 a day, or even every couple of days. And it doesn't sound like a lot, but over a course of one year, that's thousands of dollars that you're missing just by, you know, if you're doing something by paper and pen and don't have something like continue care in place. Uh, there's also the cost inefficiency. So food wastage is the, the huge one that we're able to help with. So if you do use show plates or, you know, if you have a lot of issues with incorrect food orders, or maybe you don't have the most optimal menu for the residents at the home because you don't know exactly uh, what the preferences are, you might go by an estimation or just anecdotal evidence. That's where we can help as well. Uh, so this goes back to how we solve that in dining. And I won't repeat a lot of this because I talked about it earlier, but I think the key one to really highlight is the resident, the resident dietary profiles, being able to access resident profiles, so whether it's allergies or preferences, right at the point of service, while still being able to track from a revenue point of view, you know, uh, to different payment types. So whether it's uh, if you want to track employee meals, if you want to track uh, meals that should be billed to resident, like guest meals, or even marketing dollars, like if a prospective family is coming to see the home and you want to track that that's a marketing expense, you can do that. And the last part of it is the, the resident experience, which is great dining experience. If you're being able to send orders right from the table to the kitchen without that constant back and forth or yelling um, orders, you know, in the dining room, 
the residents will have a pleasant experience while getting an efficient experience as well uh, from staff members. In terms of a high level overview, we get this question a lot, you know, how does everything fit together? Uh, the iPad, if you're thinking of the dining experience or recreation, the iPad is where staff input decisions. So if they're choosing a meal or choosing an event, the web-based portal is where controls what shows up on the iPad. So if you wanna you know, make an update to the menu, uh, that's from the web-based portal. Everything's stored in the cloud, it's HIPAA compliant, thanks to our, our friends over at MedStack. And that gets shown, you know, when an input, an order is input in the iPad, it usually gets sent to a printer or it could be to a TV screen if it's like digital signage, things like that. Other products that we do uh, work with or um, provide to customers, a popular one is digital signage. So if you have anything that's paper and pen today, you're able to replace that with this by showing menus or birthday announcements or videos. Uh, we also do recreation, which is basically allowing homes to build out activity calendars, track attendance at events, build waiting lists, uh, capture things like reservations, and just get insights into what actually residents want at the home. And you can tell this by what, which ones often have wait lists versus which ones don't. Maintenance request tracking, essentially tracking, if it, especially if it's pen and paper, uh, requests from residents. So, hey, I'd like to get my bathroom light bulb changed or just preventative maintenance tasks that you need to set up. We help with that. And then fam finally, family portal, which is a connection point between residents and family. Uh, if, going back to the whole labor challenge issue, if your staff are already busy with a number of other tasks, they don't need even more uh, work with, even though it's, you know, it is sometimes expected where family will want to know how their loved ones are doing and they might email or call to get that information. We, we could save staff a lot of time by just having something like this where family could, number one, go in and see what their loved ones ate today, what activities that they do. Um, they could see what activities they can join for, like if they want to book a reservation to see a movie at the home with their, their mom tomorrow or join for a, a lunch reservation, they could do that as well. Or even things in the future that we plan to do, like allowing family to uh, help residents with placing their food orders or booking like a salon appointment or booking that light bulb change uh, request. These are all things that will be part of the family portal. And then in terms of our cost structure, it's a one-time setup and training fee and a monthly license fee, which includes any ongoing support, any product updates that we make. And all we really need from client partners is they have Wi-Fi access, uh, which is pretty standard with homes these days. And you just send us the information, we set it up, and we complement that with on-site training, along with, after being on-site, remote training and a library of refresher videos that staff can take a look at if they don't want to, you know, call us for any particular inquiries. Uh, so that's pretty much it. And, you know, if anybody does want to connect, you know, after, after this webinar uh, directly for a one-on-one -on -one demo, or even after this webinar at the end, if there's time, happy to answer any questions or do anything else at that point. I'll hand it back to Balaji to kick off the uh, roundtable discussion. Thank you very much, Ara. <clears throat> and thank you for the, for the introduction to the, uh, to the uh, Continue Care platform. That's a great kind of segue into the next phase of our, uh, of our conversation today. We are very, very honored to have representatives of three key operators in the senior living space with us today who are all using the Continuer Care platform in various stages of implementation. We have Brian Simmons from Verve, Whitney Hiltz from uh, Del Manor, and Gary O'Brien from Charlotte. I, I'd like to turn it over to them to give a quick introduction of, of who they are, what they do, and, and how they're using the platform uh, today. So Brian, why don't we start with you? Yeah, thank you guys. <clears throat> um, so my name is Brian Simmons. I'm the Regional Director of Dining Services for Ontario at Verve Senior Living. Um, a little quick snip about myself, 20 year experience as cooking and a chef in restaurants, private clubs, et cetera, um, with the last six of those being in senior living, all with Verve. And the last two and a half years of that um, transitioned away from a chef and into the corporate level. Um, and Verve has started using Continue Care in 2016 as a pilot project in one home. So successful that we launched it across all 30 plus properties in Canada. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Uh, Whitney, how about yourself? I'm going to try to turn my camera on here so I can see everyone. Hi, my name is Whitney Hiltz. I am the Regional Manager of Living Well Services for Del Manor Seniors Communities. Uh, we have six communities. I have been uh, with the company for 13 years. We reached out to Continue Care in 2019 to start our partnership with them um, because we really saw the need for a connection between culinary and living well, which is recreation. Um, we, we saw that there was a, a definite something missing there and uh, Continue Care has been able to kind of fill all those gaps for us. Wonderful, thank you, Whitney. Um, Gary, we'd love to have you introduce yourself as well. So, good afternoon. My name is Gary O'Brien. Uh, my background in the industry started uh, with my wife and myself opening restaurants and catering companies and operating them for 23 years. Uh, we sold the, those assets off about 10 years ago and I dovetailed into uh, retirement. In my current role as regional manager with um, with uh, Jarlette, it's critically important that we improve efficiencies. We got involved with Continue Care, uh, basically because the system is solid. I've been involved with point of sale systems from the beginning, Romenco, Micro, Squirrel, all that on the, on the hospitality side. And when I saw this uh, presentation from Continue Care, I wish I had this system back in my restaurant days. It's extremely efficient, very user friendly and it's really contributed uh, substantially to the improvement of service to our residents. So that's, that's kind of who I am and my background with uh, continued care and, uh, and business in general. Thanks, Gary. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a great introduction and a, and a great kind of dive into some deep dive we'd like to do here. So I want to get into it with our, with our three panelists today and talk about uh, some specific experiences they've had with the platform. Uh, reminder to the audience, you can submit your questions in the, uh, in the Q&A or the chat uh, in Zoom. If we have time, we'll get to them at the end. Otherwise, we'll certainly follow up offline um, to get you any responses that you would like. Um, so let me start with this. We, the most important thing in running uh, these organizations is the resident experience. I think we'd all agree on that. Uh, that's what defines our success. So I, I want to talk about residents' experience, uh, changes and improvements we've seen to the platform. Brian, let's start with you. First of all, we recently, as you said, moved into a management role uh, in your facility. How has Continued Care and their platform supported you in evolving your operations now that you're in this role? Yeah, so if I can just go back quick first to when uh, we launched at our location, I was um, as a chef in one of the sites. And from that, you know, I can speak to how easy it is to roll the system with your kitchen and dining staff and how hands-on Continued Care is with you um, when you launch the program with hands-on training, um, it's the easiest seamless experience you could have. Um, and you just, from a daily operation standpoint, you see, you know, more streamlined to your service, less errors from moving away from the paper handwritten system. Um, it just makes your whole life a lot easier on the day to day. And now from like a leadership in the corporate role, um, you know, benefits the company that, you know, you're an industry leader with integrating technology. Um, as well as, you know, it gives you peace of mind to know that you're not, when you're not in a location every day, hands on looking at things that, you know, your residents are going to get what they're looking for. They're going to get what they ask for. The errors are less. And on the danger side of things, um, there's alerts in every home for an allergy or, you know, some sort of dislike or dietary need. Um, and we've had residents comment a lot about, the efficiency that they've noticed between speed of service and order accuracy as well. That's fantastic. And, and that, that directly involves uh, or, or affects the, the, the quality of the resident experience. Congratulations on that. Yeah, uh, actually, what about yourself? Well, one thing I want to sort of acknowledge as well is this industry has faced tremendous transformation in the last two years uh, because of the, of, of, of the COVID-19 pandemic. And we know that's had a, a severe impact on our, on your senior population. Um, how has the experience at, at Dell Manor evolved in the last couple of years with the use of the Continue Care platform? Yeah, there's been a, a really big shift for us um, in the need for 
making a lot of our pen and paper processes and changing them over to technology based. Um, strictly from infection control reasons, um, we just really wanted to eliminate a lot of those um, touch points. So the actual signing up for programs, um, you know, signing in and out of our building, things like that, where we didn't want to have someone dedicated to be sanitizing pens all day long for, you know, making sure that everyone is safe. Um, so really what we, we, we call it the Dell Manor experience. The Dell Manor experience is, is offering this full service package where our residents just don't have to worry about things. We worry for them. We have dealt with things on their behalf to keep them in a safe um, environment for, for the past two years. Years, and we've done a very good job of that. So, um, you know, especially during COVID, we have been able to give our residents a little bit more of their autonomy back. We had to take a lot of it away from them um, just to keep them safe, um, just to protect them from the outside world over the past two years. But with continue care and with the implementation of that, they have been able to take some of that autonomy back. Um, they've been able to sign up for programs themselves instead of having to go through a staff member who alerts another staff member to write their name on one communal list where one person's touching the pen. Um, so they've been really able to learn how to use the process. It's such an easy, easy uh you know, signing up process um, through the iPad. And uh, yeah, they've been able to do that on their own. So, you know, we don't have to be like, okay, you know, Janet, you're going to come to fitness, you know, today, she's going to go and she's going to look through all the programs and she's going to select which ones she wants to sign up for. And it's all based on her. It's no encouragement from us. She's doing it. She's taking the time out of her day. She's learning something new, um, which we love. And, uh, and she's really just taking more control of her day-to-day -day life. What an incredible story. You've managed to not only pay attention to the importance around safety in this very difficult time, but also to focus on, on easy of use experience and, and delight. Um, that, that's really great. I, so that's actually a really great segue kind of to the next thing I want to talk about. Um, it's, it's important for us to think about residents and experiences, but that has to be on a foundation of safety and well-being. That is our primary job and our first thing we need to talk about. I'd love to talk about the platform's role here. Um, Gary, at, at Gerald, you've, you've put a really kind of focus on effective, timely information sharing. And what we do. Specifically around is it resident safety. I, I'd love, and, and I believe that there's been a focus on things like allergy, uh, allergy information right. sharing. Yeah. Tell, tell us the story about how that works. Well, the one thing that we have to be uh, uh, aware of is the fact that, uh, you know, we have staffing changes, we have changes in residence. It's, a, it's an always moving fluid situation. Uh, in, uh, without, without the continue care system, most, most uh, uh, businesses have a board that posts their allergens or food likes or dislikes. That information is then uh, either not completely current or not available to the end user, the server. Uh, when they need it at the table, right? So uh, the one thing that has been a real benefit to us and I think to the industry is the fact that when that server is taking that order at that table, they're flagged right away with that. The identification of, of, of the residents, not only by name or table, it's also by a photograph. So they have instant recognition between, yes, this is the right person, this is the correct information, they're allergic to peanuts, they can't tolerate spinach, uh, and they have, and they're lactose intolerant. So as those orders come in uh, from the residents, the server can be um, can be the uh, goaltender there, and ensure that nothing gets by that order profile before it gets to the kitchen. And uh, it also allows it also allows the uh, server uh, greater interaction with the resident because if there's something on there that says they really love strawberries, we have strawberries today. You're going to make sure that. Did you want uh, strawberries with your ice cream or whatever it is? It's just more information to the end user of the server that's uh, presented to them at the point of use. Rather than, you know, we all have memories and memories are either recognition or recall. And recognition is a lot faster than recall. So they can recognize the fact that they see this person is either this or that or wants this. It's there, it's done, it's efficient. And the overall experience for the resident has been phenomenal. High, high praise. That's, that's really amazing. Um, and uh, and and I, I, you know, with with this talk about foundation of safety and well-being, 
Um, the other thing you need to really kind of manage is uh, the real-time data around this. So, so Brian, at your facility, I know one focus you've had is on census data and the role that plays in safety. How have you used that data in this platform to, to drive the focus on, on safety and well-being? Yeah, sure. So I think most importantly, it was the way it used to be done. Um, so what used to happen is you'd have your 130 residents coming to one dining room. You'd have them on one sheet of paper, small font, little grid structure. And every time they walked in, you're checking someone off that they showed up for lunch or showed up for dinner. Um, and if you had a new staff member or you're short staffed, you know, you're doing your best to make sure you've checked off every name that someone's coming and they're there and, and accounted for, so to speak. Um, so with moving to continue care, we, you know, requested to our and his, his team if we could somehow simplify that process. So we were the team they worked with to um, develop the system. So now Continue Care has the system in place where if you order food for a resident, you punch in, you take their order, check, say the sandwich for lunch, print it to the kitchen. The second you hit that print button, um, it checks them off census as they attended the meal period. So then there's no more, you know, wondering who came. And on the, the safety side of that, there's part of the app where you can click um, onto the census form in the, your tablet and it actually populates the short list of who hasn't showed up yet. So then you can you know, escalate that to a phone call for that resident um, and see where they see where they may be if they're coming, if they refused, um, or you know, God forbid they might have fallen and can't come to the phone or get to the room, right? Um, and as integrated between two departments, uh, the way we function at Verb is our reception team. Um, they have a continue care tablet at the desk when someone's leaving for the day for an absence or they're away for a meal period, the receptionist will put in as well, you know, a short-term leave of absence or a refusal for lunch. And then that also, you know, checks them off as attended as well in the census. So we, now we don't have to worry about that person anymore as well. That's fantastic, yeah. I, I, I and, and actually a really good kind of lead into the next thing I wanna talk about. So we've talked about resident experience. We've talked about safety and well-being. Another pillar that we often have to concern ourselves with is, as you referred to, Brian, is, is the operations of these facilities. And a big aspect of the operations of facilities is the teams that you have working with you. We've had a, a lot of new questions raised and a lot of new challenges raised uh, in, in light of the pandemic around staffing, um, shortages, challenges with retention, et cetera. What role does the continued care platform play in that aspect? Uh, Gary, why don't we start with you? I believe you're on mute, Gary. Yeah. But, uh, let me go back and rewind my mind here. So the uh, the good thing with Continue Care is that it is completely user friendly. So uh, when we're in a situation with uh, with staffing, if if it's a shortage, or uh, uh, call in sick, or new staff on the floor, uh, the ease of use of the system is such that I can hand someone the tablet today. And uh, like right now in this in this conversation, and I guarantee within three steps of, of of discussing the process of using it, they'll be completely functional on the system. It's completely user friendly. It's uh, the the uh, training for the staff is is almost instantaneous. When we when we first agreed to put continue care in, I had a lot of um, nervous general managers who just said, "Gary, this is too much for my staff." And I said, it's not too much for your staff. We're going to show you. Don't panic. And we got into the location. And within moments of uh, taking the units out of the box, the servers, even the ones that were a little longer in the tooth, were saying, Gary, this is amazing. They had, they had uh, within three steps of, of training, they had full use of the system. We were able to go out and use it completely productively. So in a situation where you've got uh, staff that are short, it's easy for someone who is not always running the system to jump in and take either a section or take certain tables from that server uh, with a with a additional um, uh, uh, iPad, but it's just, uh, the system in itself is just incredible as far as its ease of use and ease of training. And the efficiency that it gives the staff allows the staff to have more time to do greater things in the dining room. So uh, if I can just specify one, one, one major benefit to me, is uh, it releases the, the, it changes the entire chain of 
of the flow of food. So when, when you write a chit, you give that to your chef, he's now responsible to produce that food when he needs it, right? So uh, with this continuous care system, the server uh, generates the food plating. So in other words, when they need that food, when the soup is done, when the salad is done, they hit send to the kitchen. It goes off to the kitchen. That food is then plated back out to the uh, back out to the the uh, table, and uh, you've ended up. You reduce your you reduced uh, the amount of steps back and forth from the server, which increases the efficiency and allows easier training. It uh, allows the server to be longer in the dining room to be more efficient at what they do which at times if you're short, that's incredibly important because now you've got, you're down one server. It's not as much of a dent because that person's got additional time uh, compared to a paper system. And uh, so by, by channeling that, that uh, information to the server and giving them control as to when they want the food, it allows for a greater efficient. And the one thing that it does do, it reduces uh, food claims on temperature. We all know that's one of the major issues in every building, doesn't matter what company we're working for. Uh, somewhere down the line, there's someone who says, my food isn't quite hot enough. This reduces that because the amount of time that lays up on that, uh, on that counter is reduced to a matter of moments or minutes rather than 10 minutes because the server wasn't able to come back. So the benefits to this system from the standpoint of, of uh, when you're short-staffed, it's less noticeable. When you're fully staffed, it's more efficient. And uh, the processing of the food and the plating is, is much more controlled by the people who know when that food needs to hit the table, the server. So as far as I'm concerned, the, the system has, has um, been multiple beneficial on so many different levels. It's, it's, it's one of the most efficient uh, uses of time, I think, that we've put into, into practice. That's fantastic. Brian, you've been nodding your head. Have you had similar experiences at Verve, particularly in the kitchen, about moving from paper to digital on this platform? Yeah, so so Gary covered everything perfectly on the dining room side. Um, but I can give you a list of things that there's any chefs on the call or or general managers who have a kitchen background, the stuff that like drives them crazy is um, you know, a server who's trying to be efficient with a handwritten chit. She'll take four orders and on the way back to the kitchen, stop at the next table and take two orders. And on the way to the kitchen, stop and take another two orders and then walk to the kitchen and here's here's 10 orders in a stack. Um, what happens with continue care is that server goes to their table. They take that order when they're ready for it. They hit print, the kitchen has it. They go to the next table, hit print. A couple of minutes later, the kitchen has more. So it like increases that steady flow of what happens in the kitchen um, where the kitchen can you know efficiently keep up. You know, any kitchen who can still put out templates at once doesn't have a server who can deliver templates at once. Um, so it, it really streamlines it from that side and brings the servers and cooks really in line with timing with each other. Um, and then also it, it really cleans up the way the bill comes through. So the bills come through with uh, resident name and suite number, uh, meal time, and then right below what they're having. What would happen before was you'd have a server taking four almost identical orders and writing it four different ways. So you have a cook, first of all, trying to decipher um, someone's handwriting and then also trying to figure out, you know, are these four orders the exact same? Yes, they are, but they're in four different ways. Someone will say, you know, half order of chicken with no vegetables. The other one will say, you know, half order of chicken, only potatoes, um, and then underneath half portion. So it's like, it's the same, you know, same author, same order, two different ways to write it. Um, continue care streamlines it all. There's a, uh, quick quick substitute buttons so the server will pick chicken and then they'll click half order and then they'll click vegetable only so every time someone wants that style dish um, it's written the same every time and then on the on the other side too um, from show plates the kitchens used to put out show plates in the dining room you know mm -hmm. they go at 11 30 someone comes in for lunch two hours later um, the show plate really starts to you know, not look appetizing. So you come to the dining room like, mm, don't know if I want that. But when you turn the tablet to them and say, this is the chicken dish today, um, it's a fresh picture. The picture never deteriorates. Uh, so they have this visual of a fresh, um, beautifully plated show plate, you know, right in front of them, always looking good. Um, it, it actually increases people's desire to order the feature um, instead of going to a la carte because when I saw the feature, it was two hours old and I don't think I want to taste it anymore. It's really interesting. Very, very specific. Um, that's that's great. Whitney, what about yourself at your facility? Um, how has the platform played a role in 
staffing operations and efficiency in, in what it is you do. Yeah, so as I mentioned before, um, we were relying on the pen and paper method before uh, pre-COVID. And um, when the capacity restrictions came into place due to the pandemic, we really had to be careful um, how many residents we were allowing into each program. So it was very, very limited. So we actually had to have one designated staff member carrying around a portable phone taking phone calls almost all day long to write down, you know, which residents were wanted to come to which programs um, because we were so strict on how many could be in a room based on the capacity limit. So we literally had to eliminate that person from doing that job at all anymore. They have a totally different role. They're actually doing um, quality programming instead of just writing down, um, you know, attendance numbers. So it, it's really saved us. And we feel like we've gained an extra team member um, just by in, introducing the system and having our residents do it themselves. Um, so it's really made their jobs a lot easier. It's and also having one centralized iPad. So we have one iPad that all the residents come down to and they're able to sign up on their own. It's really, it's hands off for us. I mean, we, we were able to focus on the things that really matter to the residents, which is running the programs, making sure they have quality things going on throughout the day. So they can just come down there on their own, sign up themselves and you know, their day begins. That's great. Yeah. I it's just like an extra staff member is probably a really, really great way to think about it. Um, and, and you kind of alluded to something here. So, so I want to kind of get into that next. I want to talk about data in my, my kind of initial keynote. I talked about the important role of data and digital product can play in terms of providing better experiences. I would love to know what that, what that means for, for you all. So it, data and digital experiences and workflows around how it becomes a mess hub for your ROI. Whitney, let me turn it back over to you. I know you've had a focus on sort of resident social experiences. What role does data play in delivering that? So we we always like to know what our residents enjoy doing. So we can base what they enjoy doing on whether they're showing up for programs, whether they're you know talking about it at, at lunch. But with Continue Care, we can actually track what programs the residents are attending. And we can then, based on their preferences that we've inputted, is we can actually group like-minded residents together. So we can group all of our bridge players together without having to pick up the phone and call 150 residents to ask if they want to play bridge. I know I have eight residents that like to play bridge that length shortens my time drastically, but I'm just going to call these people and ask them if they want to play this afternoon. So it's really been a huge time saver in that way. And just the data that we've been able to extract from having that right at our fingertips has been so valuable. We also used to use pen and paper to do our initial intake forms. So like our resident profiles where they would, we would get to know a little bit more about them. And really we would put that in a binder and file it away and never look at it again. But now it's actually on the iPad, it's on our system, it's on the computer, which we're on and off all day. We can just click on there, look up the resident that we wanna see, you know, what their interests are, what we might be missing. And the information is right at your fingertips. Very powerful. Uh, Brian, what about for you, particularly around how you're using data to deliver better service, better ROI and, and on the food service side? What, what kind of stories can you tell us there? Brian may have frozen. Nope. You might still be muted there, Brian. Can you hear us? I'm back now. <laughs> I can now. Sorry, guys. All right, great. No problem. Yeah, I was asking, how, how are you using data in the continued care platform to deliver better ROI and better resident experiences on the food service side of your facility? Uh, there's, there's a short list, I guess, that I love. Um, Real-time data. So, you know, we have the tablets and servers hands, but we also have a wall iPad. So when you're in mid-service and you know in your head or, or with your team that we've prepped, I don't know, 80 chicken and we've prepped 40 salmon tonight because we know that's where it might be. You can check the live data and you can, you know, start of service, midway through service. You can look at the scrolling bar and it tells you exactly how many chicken or fish have been ordered to that moment. You can kind of see where you're on track for, do I need to prep more last minute or are we good? So that, that helps from the. Oh, Brian, looks like we've lost you again. Are we back? Uh, we're back for now. Sorry, guys. So then on the, on the second side of it, um, we run off our four to six week cycle menu like most people do. Um, so, you know, if it's today is Wednesday and you have, 
you know, chicken and fish and, and you're true to your cycle, you can look back six weeks and say, <coughs> six weeks ago, this is what we served. This is how much we should prep for tonight. Or even that's how much I should order from my supplier. Um, and then, it, you know, in that sense, helps you to reduce food waste as well. Um, for billing, like I mentioned before, the, the integration between reception and kitchen um, is awesome. Like we, we bill through our, um, you know, debit machines are all reception, not in the dining room. So when someone orders food with, with a guest or they, you know, want a glass of wine, whether they want to pay cash or bill to room, right from the tablets in the dining room, you can uh, choose to finish the meal service, bill them, and it automatically sends a bill to reception for a collection then or bill to room, bill to the suite later. Um, and that takes away from, you know, family members who might want to come in and pay when their mom or dad actually want to just treat them. And it also helps to, you know, not miss that handwritten bill that a server who's busy forgets to give it to them or, you know, a, a piece of paper just gets lost. So this actually, instead of being from one hand to the other, sends it to reception for payment. Um, and then again, like as a chef who likes to be independent, when it comes to your month end reporting and the office manager is on a vacation or a day off, you don't have to ask them about what was my bar revenue, what was my meal revenue. You log into the web-based format of the continue care system and you pull all your numbers yourself. It makes the dining department more self-sufficient with um, you know, revenue, month end reporting. It, it really streamlines everything in one hub. Amazing, um, very, very powerful. So we've talked a lot about uh, very specifics around how the Continue Care platform is helping you with the operations in your facilities. Uh, but another aspect of, uh, of the benefit that we, we, we know you've seen as well is the relationship you've had with Continue Care as a service provider. Um, Gary, let me start over for you. As I understand, you've had a very impressive rollout of a, a number of homes in a very short amount of time. How did Continue Care yeah. help you do that? Well, uh, first of all, the, the process was extremely, um, uh, again, I'll you know, use the same term, I guess, user-friendly and efficient. Uh, basically, we rolled out uh, seven buildings in seven weeks. It was just one building after the other, one rolled into the, one rolled into the other. We had the, um, we actually had the uh, trainer come in the day before the launch just to uh, ensure that the systems were configured properly and all, all things were functioning as they should. Uh, after we had that uh, brief meeting with him for an hour or so, uh, we were ready, ready to launch the next day uh, in each building. Uh, the trainer was able to get on deck about an hour beforehand uh, as far as the, uh, the staff were concerned arriving. We planned out the day within a half an hour of the training beginning. We went from servers who were extremely uh, nervous about this new thing that they didn't quite understand to understanding that if you can run a cell phone, you can run the continued care system. It's just, it's just that simple. It's just that user-friendly. It's just that efficient. So we went, uh, we had two days of training and we only really put a back-end training in um, uh, just because we, we, were, we were evolving the way we were doing things on day one to best suit uh, the efficiency of continued care. And each one was tailored to each building. Because each building, even though we're the same company, no building is the same. We have different residents. We have all sorts of profiles that have changed uh, from building to building. But because Continue Care is the efficient system that it is, we're able to uh, develop that per building in one or two shifts. The next day, which was really more of a, now we've put these changes in place, let's see how it runs. It was the most efficient, uh, most efficient launching of any point of sale system that I've had experience with. So we went from doing that in one location, rolling into the next location. And uh, once, once you uh, have your printer set up, which is running a cable from your cable, cabling room to your printer site, that's probably the most difficult part of the entire process. And that's done well ahead of the time before, uh, before we start uh, getting this continue care equipment in the building. But, no, I, I was very impressed with uh, with how how easy it was for the staff to uh, develop the concept and appreciate the concept. And I've I've been in buildings since we've launched that, and staff have come up to me and said, "You know, Gary, I'm surprised that we didn't start using this earlier." Uh, I was I had a, had an opportunity um, two Saturdays ago. I was in a building. And I, I, uh, lunch was just beginning, so I asked one of the servers if I could take their station. I took their 
their um, continue care tablet off them. And I ran that station for that, uh, for that. No one walked out, no one got mad, but it's just, it allowed me, someone who has very light experience with that system to dovetail in there almost seamlessly and still have the same level of service, which told me that as we train people that come through the system, they should be able to pick up and run with that system just as efficiently as I am or I could. So, uh, uh, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. I, I've, I've seen the, uh, the flow from, from building to building and staff to staff, but until you actually experience it, you can't really appreciate the, the level of, of sophistication that this system gives that leads to the ease of use. And um, like I said, I've been involved with Romenko when he first came out. Uh, I won't tell you how long ago that was. Uh, Micros with Hugen Suida and the squirrel system. And this system is light years ahead of that. And it's, it's just a very, um, very intuitive system. If you can run a cell phone, you can run this thing. That's my experience as far as the ease of use is. And the fact that I have so much cooperation from, from Continue Care. I know that uh, as as uh, as our needs change or evolve or or things uh, uh, pick up in the building that uh, uh, we may decide to add a feature, Continue Care is right there for me. They're only a telephone call away. I've I've had the great opportunity of proving that fact, and they were there for me when I needed them. So, I have only the highest praise for the system and the and the company. That's fantastic. Yeah, I want to give Whitney and Brian a chance to weigh in as well. So Whitney, you were talking about the the, the social uh, activity program that, that you're running in your facility. How did you collaborate with the Continue Care team to build that out? So we really didn't know what we were doing um, when we started. We didn't know which direction we were going, how it was going to be created, because it was really built from the ground up for us by Continue Care, by Era and Alex. Um, uh, we got to know them with very, very well in a very short amount of time because we had so many questions. Um, and what it started out with was us literally just taking photos of our pen and paper systems, sending it to the team and saying, how can you make this work for us and make it digital? And they were able to crush it because we have such a user-friendly system now. Our residents are able to use it on their own. Um, you know, it's if we message them and say, you know, we're getting some complaints that the, the font is too small. It's like instantly it's like, OK, font is up now. So it's bigger. You can read it easier. Um, so they're so, so responsive to any of our um, suggestions or, you know, any any problems that we're having. They seem to have a solution for it. Um, just last week, actually, in one of our larger communities in Aurora, we discovered the need for a reservation system, a proper reservation system. Nothing like that has been created yet. So we found a way to use an existing interface within the activity platform to let the dining room use it, create their own event, whereas it was really just a reservation. So we were actually able to get like double usage out of the same interface that was already created. So it didn't take any extra time on their part. It didn't, um, it was just basically flipping a switch and allowing them access to our part of the of the program. And we were able to use it to make our dining room even more efficient than it already is using the system. So we have had no issues working with the team and we have lots of um, great ideas moving forward that I'm sure um, everyone else will benefit from as well. That's great. Uh, Brian, uh, take us home. Can you tell us the story about collaborating with the Continue Care team to build new features? Yeah, like so the one we touched on was, you know, they created the census for us, um, which made things amazing. Um, and that was a bigger project. We had things early on too where, you know, and I kind of touched on earlier was we had residents who very common request across every resident you'll ever walk into, no matter what company, half portions, no vegetables, sauce on the side. So, you know, servers on a restaurant POS system, or even this one early on, we're typing those in. Um, Aaron and his team were able to create little quick modification buttons. So there's a whole legend on the side where if someone has a common request, it's already there. So instead of entering a separate, you know, menu to type something, you just click the button, it attaches to the order. You know, they've always been like adaptive and responsive in those ways for us. Um, you know, there's been a lot of capability um, for us too. And, you know, the system's quick. And they're amazing. Like we've had new dining service managers who 
aren't so savvy and they've sent their teams in, you know, a couple of years after the system system's been running to give a little refresh and, and train people the right way. I think the shortest way to put it is like Verve made the right choice six years ago, right? That's the easiest way to put it. That's amazing. I, I want to thank all three of you. I know we're, we're almost out of time here, but, but for sharing very personal stories about uh, the operations of your facilities, your drive towards creating better resident experiences and better experiences for your staff and, and your operations in your in your facilities and your partnership with continued care. This has been very, very enlightening for me and I hope the audience uh, feels the same as well. I would now like to turn it back to our hosts to help wrap us up. Thank you, Balaji. It's Tina here from TW Networks. We do have one question um, that has come up on the, the chat um, and it was asking about, does the system have the ability to take reservations? Um, just wondering if somebody might wanna be able to answer that question. Wendy, you're muted. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can address right. that. I yeah. mean, I think uh, yeah. Whitney just answered that we mm -hmm. previously did not have the reservation capability, but uh, after working with their team and enabling the recreation module to kind of be turned on, we were able to do reservations now. So yes. Great. Thank you for that quick answer. So I know in the essence of time, I just want to say on behalf of Continue Care and, and myself and Wendy, um, thank you to all of you who have sat on this webinar with us today and a big, huge thank you to our panelists. We know that you're super, super busy. We do appreciate the time you took with us today, your insights, all of your great points that you brought up. So thank you so much for, for dedicating this hour to us and the prep time and sharing all of your wonderful insights. Um, we can, um, not the panelists, but we'll let you go. We know that you're super busy, but um, and Balaji, thank you so much too for moderating and for your wonderful insights this morning or at the start of this presentation. So thank you so much for that as well. Um, we can stay on, Era, if you want it. Um, if anyone would like to ask a little more in-depth questions or actually see some parts of the Continue Care product, we're more than happy to stick on if you would like. So just... Uh, let us know, raise your hand or ask a question, um, send it in the chat and we'll be more than happy to stay on a little bit longer if you'd like.